Hello, my name is Jessica Duthu, and I live in Savannah, Georgia. I'm a mama, a maker, and an educator. This is my first class at the University of Florida in my Master's of Art Education. I chose to research the therapeutic value of art and education. Throughout history, humans have used art as a language to define cultures, communicate ideas, and to mark periods in time. Art is something to be experienced, but there might be so much more going on under the surface of creating works of art than we are aware of. Over the past decade, health psychologists have begun looking at how the arts might be used to heal emotional injuries, increase understanding of oneself and others, develop a capacity for self-reflection, and alter behaviors and thinking patterns. Art itself provides a natural canvas for social-emotional learning to take place and for self-actualization to thrive. To quote Susan Langer, the primary function of art is to objectify feeling so that we can contemplate and understand it. It is the formulation of so-called inward experience, the inner life, that is impossible to achieve by discursive thought because its forms are incommensurable with the forms of language. Victor Lowenfeld, Florence Kane, and Victor de Amnico were all trailblazers in the field of art education psychology. Though all three players have some sizable differences in approach, they all saw art education as the unlocking of psychological human potential through the unfettered creation of artworks. The diagnosis of maladjustment problems, therapy for neurosis, psychospiritual self-expression, promotion of creativity in art, and then later of general creativity, became the benefits of art in schools as they were continuously proclaimed in journals, conferences, and college classrooms. Lowenfeld was primarily concerned with the psychological growth of the child as measured by progress in art education. Art education and art therapy merged upon his arrival to the United States in the 1940s. The field of psychology heavily influenced Lowenfeld's writing and the theoretical development, in particular the work of Sigmund Freud and the discipline of psychotherapy. Victor Lowenfeld published a theory on artistic development where he identified and defined artistic stages. In his book, Creative and Mental Growth, Lowenfeld outlined six artistic stages of development from infancy through adolescence based on social, emotional, intellectual, and psychological growth. The, the developmental stages beginning with the scribble stage and concluding with the age of decision incorporated key areas of development and correlating age ranges. Lowenfeld's theory uniquely incorporated creativity, art making, developmental, and psychological theories that emphasize the uniqueness of individual growth within each child. Lowenfeld laid a psychological foundation for the way children develop in and through art and he crystallized the teaching of progressive education. He coined the term art education therapy and defined it as being the use of creativity as a mean of self-realization. In line with Lowenfeld's belief of merging psychology with the field of art education, Florence Kane focused on the development of the individual. Kane believed that preparation should be taken before any art form is created. She felt that the body must be exercised and loosened and that the mindset needed to be focused before creation could begin. Florence Kane used a series of standing exercises in front of the easel that dealt with specific movements or were used to stimulate the interest of the child in reaction to a specific sound or chanting exercise. Her approach to art education was influenced by her experience undergoing psychoanalysis with Dr. Beatrice Hinkle and the work of Carl Jung. Florence Kane recognized that art creation aided in the growth of social skills, reasoning and perception, and the desire to communicate objective experience. Kane emphasized that technique should only be introduced when the children needed it. For example, perspective might be taught to a child who wanted to paint the interior of a church, or color theory and mixture of compliments to the child who needed a tender gray for her paintings. With a hopeful attitude, Kane stated, The teaching of art is changing. New frontiers are opening up. The psychological approach no longer regards the art product as separate from the artist. The work of, the, of art is recognized as a psychic chart of the state of the creator, showing his attitude, direction, and pattern. All the problems the young artist confronts must be realized by the teacher in terms of the psyche. In the 1940s, Victor D'Amnico, the educational director of the Museum of Modern Art, 
continued in the realm of art education psychology. The Amnico emphasized giving the art student the same working freedom as the professional artist. Each student was to be considered separate from his or her classmates, rather than the class moving as a whole. He believed it was essential that artwork be creative and free in spirit, and that from conception to execution, it should be the individual's own choice. His article, Art Therapy and Education, explores the experience of creative expression as the healing effect. He writes, Repressions and other forms of handicap are often discharged merely by working in creative media. The person, so to speak, gets the difficulty out of a system through painting, modeling, or expressing himself in any chosen medium. In this way, the art ed- experience serves as an emotional or mental prerogative. Dan Nicole suggests that the ad- ideal method in employing art therapy in schools is for a psychologist and an art teacher to work together. Because of the special art techniques required and the science involved, neither art teacher nor psychologist can encompass both fields, but together can use art as a therapeutic tool in the school system. The Amnico's life work highlighted the tremendous possibilities offered by the creative process and the individual's quest for self-actualization. The art experience itself should impress upon a student that the uniqueness of each person is exceptionally important. Art is not an exclusive domain only reserved for the talented. Each of us, regardless of previous experience, has the fundamental ability to create visual works, no matter how simple, which prove that we are unique from one another. Each student should acknowledge that through the practice of art, they can both enhance the self through the realization of personal experience and provide a bridge to the awareness of others. With a return to child-centered art education and an incorporation of aspects of art therapy in today's art room, the longing for self-actualization may be satisfied. The fear to create art may be uncovered then removed, and those who will be teachers may learn from more ways of simultaneously reaching the inner child and encouraging positive behavior and productivity in that child. Today we see a wave of educators adapting to the philosophy of social and emotional learning, which is the process through which children and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. Personally, I have tried to adapt social-emotional learning in my art room, as well as implement the techniques of Kane, Lowenfeld, and De Amnico with my students. I specifically am drawn to approaching each student as an individual and allowing them space to create, only interjecting when needed. I chose the specific topic of the therapeutic value of art in education because I have many memories of being a young student confronted with the stressors of school and adolescence. And I remember how much creating works of art helped me emotionally and socially. I will leave you with this quote from Mary Lee Hodnett. She wrote, How interesting it would be if it turns out that the arts had all this time the potential for making schools more relevant and human, and how appropriate if it is through the expressive therapies that the arts find an honored place within school walls. Thank you.